hitting the high seas can be exhilarating. After all, harnessing the power of the wind helped drive an age of exploration. And it can still lead to adventure. Now, imagine traveling through the solar system and beyond in much the same way. Interstellar travel, propelled by light, not wind, in the vacuum of space. Far-fetched? Perhaps. But solar sailing, as it's called, is a relatively new technology with a very old history and a growing number of achievements. We're not there yet, but this vision of very rapid solar sails that leave the solar system, they're out there. They're the far steps of what we're seeing in the near steps of solar sailing, and it's all very exciting. Providing much of the momentum behind solar sailing today is the Planetary Society, a California-based nonprofit. As the organization's chief scientist, Bruce Betts manages the light sail program, a 10-year, $7 million effort entirely funded by public donations to maneuver a small craft in space using only sunlight. But how's that really work? You have a source of pressure, in this case it's sunlight instead of wind. It's pushing on a big sail and causing acceleration, causing it to move. Here, take a look. Bill Nye, the Planetary Society's CEO and popular science communicator, demonstrates solar sailing in his own unique way. Light is made up of particles we call photons. So imagine this ping pong ball is a photon a single particle of light. If we have a spacecraft that's low enough mass and big and reflective enough, then photons can give it a little push. Each photon imparts just a tiny bit of momentum, but the sun pumps out billions and billions of them every second. Now imagine this happy cookie sheet is the reflective sail of a spacecraft. Whoa! It gets a push through space! So one of the key things in solar sailing is area of the sail divided by the mass of the spacecraft. And the bigger you make that, the higher your acceleration is going to be. Solar sailing is an idea that originated in the 17th century, when astronomer Johannes Kepler pondered why the tails of comets always streamed away from the sun. And so he contemplated capturing this solar force to sail among the stars. In modern days, the Planetary Society and its founders, including the late Carl Sagan, became solar sailing's most ardent advocates. I was in Carl Sagan's class 40 years ago, and he talked about solar sailing. To put it to the test, they had to engineer a program and a viable spacecraft, now known as light sail. The miniaturization of technology helped, including the development of CubeSats, small, lightweight vessels that carry increasingly complex instruments. All totaled, the entire aluminum assembly, fully packed, weighs a mere five kilograms, or just 11 pounds, and it's about the size of a bread box. Then, of course, there's the sail, made of mylar, like those blankets runners get after finishing a marathon. We use something shiny and thin, thin so that it's low in mass, uh, because you want to keep your mass of your spacecraft low so you have higher acceleration, and shiny because we get twice the momentum transfer when the photon hits, if it actually hits and bounces back. This is the actual material. It includes tiny threads in amongst it called rip stops, so that if a rip starts, it will stop. The final design also includes four lightweight boom shafts made of an alloy called algaloy to support the sails. 32 square meters when unfurled, or about the size of a boxing ring. The Planetary Society, I'm very proud to say, is launching our light sail spacecraft. Light sail! Light sail 1 was sent into Earth's orbit in 2015 for a systems test power and communications, but it was never intended to attempt solar sailing. Five, four, 
Four years later, though, this 400-year-old concept and decade-old program would experience an acceleration of achievements during the summer of 2019. First, on June 25th, with the launch of LightSail 2 aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. And again, after about a month in space on July 23rd. 786, cell <laughs> deployment complete. All right. LightSail 2's sails were successfully deployed to the delight of the mission staff closely following the operation. Congratulations to everyone. That was fantastic. We were able to get a ride to 720 kilometers orbit, which is high enough that solar radiation pressure actually dominates over atmospheric drag. So we could actually try to do controlled solar sailing. A mere eight days later, Betts, Nye, and the rest of the Planetary Society team made a thrilling announcement on a conference call with news media science writers. In the past four days, the spacecraft has raised its apogee, or orbital high point, by about 1.7 kilometers attributable to solar sailing. It successfully completed its primary goal of demonstrating flight by light for CubeSats. Controlled adjustments to the craft's positioning helped it achieve its ultimate goal. As we were approaching the sun, as we orbited the Earth, we went edge on, so the sunlight would just Pass, passed it in a perfect way. And then as the sail came around and was going away from the sun, we would face it face on, and that would cause the solar sailing pressure to happen, and then edge on and then face on. And it's not a perfect system, so it didn't follow that perfectly, but it followed it well enough that we were able to raise the apogee, the high point of the orbit, by several kilometers. This is, uh, this is an old dream to sail in space with sunlight. LightSail 2 will remain in Earth's orbit for about a year before it ultimately burns up in Earth's atmosphere. But the end of its flight won't be the end of solar sailing, to be sure. NASA's near-Earth asteroid scout probe plans to use solar sail technology to fly by a neighborhood asteroid, collecting scientific data. Slated for launch in the next couple of years, the probe hopes to build on LightSail 2's success. We're feeding forward what we learn from our spacecraft and have been able to answer some questions for them uh, about what we've seen in terms of performance. These are all steps leading towards practical application of solar sails in space exploration. But don't expect to see humans transported this way anytime soon. Remember that area mass ratio which makes this all work? It's tricky because you automatically, to keep humans alive, have a lot of mass. And if you have a lot of mass, you need a lot of area of your sail. So why go to all this trouble in the first place? The answer lies in the steady stream of photons emanating from the sun. Solar sailing doesn't require any fuel, and that means missions can be flexible and, in theory, indefinitely extended, positioned closer to the sun than currently possible to provide better warnings about fast-approaching solar storms that can damage Earth's satellites and electrical grid. If you get farther in the future, we have these other wild, exciting possibilities, and that includes going to even other stars. That's the plan of the privately funded Breakthrough Starshot Initiative. Announced in 2016, the program hopes to advance solar sail technology to explore the cosmos, sending miniature spacecrafts the size of a postage stamp to a nearby star system, powered in part with a boost from Earth-based lasers. Sounds like science fiction, but the late great astrophysicist Stephen Hawking believed this research has real potential. With light beams, light sails, and the lightest spacecraft ever built, we can launch a mission to Alpha Centauri within a generation. The key is, is to accelerate your spacecraft a lot early, early on 
when you still have a lot of photons from the lasers and then you essentially coast at very high speeds for uh, the rest of your mission. In the vacuum of space, solar sailing can mean constant, undeterred acceleration, theoretically approaching 10 or even 20% of the speed of light. Starshot's promise has many excited about the possibilities. Can you imagine the riches that we would get from data coming back from not one, but dozens or hundreds of these little star chips going by the Alpha Centauri system and taking a close look. This area here is where the solar sail is actually stored until it's deployed. But back on Earth, looking over the schematics for Light Sail 2, Bruce Betts knows, despite all its recent accomplishments, Solar sailing has a long way to go, literally and figuratively, before venturing among the stars becomes a reality. I think it's incremental as most technology developments are, so the next step is just to work on bigger sails, smaller spacecraft, and going farther and demonstrating and learning from those experiences.